I have many videos on SD-WAN, how it works, what it's good for, all the things that make the case for SD-WAN. But this video is about how to prepare to deploy SD-WAN. Virtually everyone I speak to is on board with the concept of SD-WAN, but very few have done what's necessary to deploy it. It's not hard work, but there's several steps that need to be taken and taken in order to allow you to move forward with confidence. Let's explore what those steps are going to be. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is uh, uh, designed and intended to help IT leaders make great business decisions. And based upon the clients we work with, I'd say about 20% of the wide area networks are now SD-WAN enabled. SD-WAN stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. And as I said, I have many videos on SD-WAN fundamentals uh, on this channel. And I'll link a playlist to some of those videos in the description of this video. At 30,000 feet, however, SD-WAN is an internet-enabled networking strategy that provides high level of control to optimize path selection, prioritize and manage traffic, uh, security platforms are very common in SD-WAN solutions, and increasingly we're seeing secure remote access solutions as well. So SD-WAN gives network engineers a very granular level of control that can be applied uniformly across the network using a single management platform. SD-WAN is the only real opinion for network management and optimization, in my opinion at least. The only clients I see who are not interested in SD-WAN are those uh, where the network is just not that important. If your network is good enough, doesn't take any time to manage, and is the lowest cost you can imagine, then maybe this video is not for you. This is not uncommon, but personally, I believe everything should be elevated to a strategic service, something that gives the organization an advantage. And if you're not sure why SD-WAN provides an advantage, then jumping into the playlist I've linked in this video, uh, in the description of this video, might be a good next step. Okay. I said about 20% of the clients we work with have gone SD-WAN so far. I get it. The network is working. You have other priorities stacked up, and then you have contracts that you need to manage and equipment that needs to be sweated out until the last moment, et cetera. So 80% of you haven't yet taken the SD-WAN plunge. Of those 80%, my experience is that um, about one-third are MPLS and two-thirds are VPN based uh, for their site-to-site -site traffic. Regardless of the network you have today, planning to move to SD-WAN follows the same steps in strategic approach. So here's the work plan. Number one is inventory assessment. Of course, every IT project starts with an inventory assessment. That's kind of the, the, the way we operate. We need to know what we have before we start looking about change or thinking about changing things. So comprehensive inventory and assessment of the current network infrastructure is essential. You have to know what you have and what's working and what needs improvement. And then that allows you to plan for potential impacts and assess your transition strategy. This phase should document all assets, including hardware, applications, data stores, and so forth. It should also include an in-depth analysis of network traffic, identifying peaks and patterns that will dictate the capacity needed for the SD-WAN solution. Second step would be that then to identify your team. The transition to SD-WAN is a significant project and will touch a number of parts of the organization. Thus, you have to assemble a team that uh, has stakeholders from the impacted departments, and if possible, network users. The team should be tasked with designing and implementing and monitoring the transition process. Third phase, plan, training, and skill development. Migrating to SD-WAN requires a shift in skills and knowledge. You want people who are open to training and not wedded to their specific platforms. Let's face it, there are a lot of Cisco-only people in networking. They base their career on their Cisco certifications, and while Cisco has a very good SD-WAN platform, here I'm referring to the Viptela platform versus the Meraki platform, which really isn't as robust as, as most of the other platforms out in the marketplace today. Uh, but again, Cisco does have a very good platform. It's just one of several viable options you'll want to evaluate. You need people in those evaluations that will do so, uh, that will evaluate with an open mind. Training programs should be anticipated to ensure that the team is well equipped with the necessary skills to manage and troubleshoot the new network. I will say that most of the interfaces to these SD-WAN platforms are super uh, user-friendly. 
So training generally is not a long pole in this uh, overall deployment tent. Step four, designing the SD-WAN architecture. Okay, this is where the rubber meets the road. Designing the new SD-WAN sh uh, architecture should align with the organization's business objectives. If the network is going to be strategic to the organization, you have to have a network strategy that fits the corporate strategy and develop it before you meet with vendors. The design process has to factor in redundancy, scalability, security, among uh, other variables. You need to have a clear picture of your desired outcome from both a topology and performance basis, as well as a management strategy. As I said, construct this before meeting with vendors and be disciplined. Vendors will try to steer you from your strategy uh, if it conflicts with their product offering. Step five. You want to start talking with vendors and, and ultimately select a vendor. Choosing the right SD-WAN vendor is clearly the most critical step in this process. If you don't have the right platform, you're not going to be able to achieve your objectives. The market is deep with various vendors, each offering different solutions with their own respective strengths and weaknesses. The organization, your organization, should base its selection on the best fit to the strategy previously developed. You're going to learn some things during the vendor uh, evaluation uh, process, and that might modify your strategic approach, but those should be, mar be at the margins of your plan, and you shouldn't redesign your entire plan based upon something that a vendor tells you. This is the stage when you may want to consider engaging in a consultancy that understands all the major platforms and provides unbiased guidance. My company happens to uh, do this for free, by the way, just a shameless plug. But it's, it's a good idea if you're not certain about being able to evaluate various vendors. So step six, plan the rollout. A phased rollout is typically uh, the, uh, the best option for larger networks. This minimizes the business, business disruption and allows the team to identify and correct any issues before full deployment. A common approach is to start with less critical locations and then gradually expand to other areas once the system is stable and reliable. If you're going from MPLS to SD-WAN, your MPLS provider may be able to just flip your MPLS circuit to an internet circuit. This strategy is best suited if you're under contract. If you're out of contract on your MPLS, we usually save clients quite a bit of money by delivering new internet connections. The client can then, or you can then, uh, cancel the MPLS service after the SD-WAN is installed and operational. This also allows you to uh, run parallel networks until you have your SD-WAN configuration locked down. Most SD-WAN platforms today support MPLS, but ask the question just to make sure. You don't want to make, make an assumption that you can run MPLS off of any SD-WAN platform. There are still a few out there that do not support it. Step seven, we're almost at the end, I promise. Security considerations. While SD-WANs inherently improves network security by separating the control plane from the data plane, additional security measures must be implemented. Uh, integrating the SD-WAN with firewalls, intrusion detection systems, data encry encryption services, um, et cetera, is, a vital, uh, is vital to ensure consistent protection. My personal preference is to migrate as many of your security solutions as possible to the SD-WAN provider, uh, where you're going to get a much tighter integration. But this is an ongoing process. Don't try to do this all at once. Generally, you have sunk cost in your security point solutions that also need to be considered. And um, you just don't want to strand that, that investment uh, until you've optimized your return from it. So step eight. Performance monitoring and optimization. After deployment, continuous monitoring and optimization of the SD-WAN is necessary. Continuous may be a strong word. I would say early on continuous absolutely is, and then you can sort of uh, set it and forget it uh, because you have, uh, you, you have con conducted and performed the appropriate optimization. You have to continuously monitor the network's health, traffic patterns, and performance metrics and make necessary adjustment, adjustments. I consider this the fun part. This is where the benefits of SD-WAN really come to fruition. Number nine, next to last, establish a disaster recovery plan. While SD-WAN is built to be way more resilient than current network strategies, any network is susceptible to failures and a well-defined to find disaster recovery plan is a must. You should detail steps for failover, backup, and data recovery. 
And remember, a plan is just a plan until it's tested. Have a disaster testing policy. Last one, probably the least favorite of all, post-deployment documentation. I know we all hate documentation, but following the deployment, you really should have the transition team update the network documentation to reflect the new architecture, uh, configurations, procedures, et cetera. The documentation part is always a low priority, but it's easiest to accomplish right after the project is finished. So get that done and, um, and when everything is fresh in everyone's mind, because that's my personal opinion. So there you have it. 10 steps to move from your current network to an SD-WAN network. It's clearly not rocket science, and taking one step at a time will make all the difference in your success. If you want to evaluate SD-WAN for your organization, please reach out to me. My contact information is in the, in the description of this video. We represent all the major players in the industry, and as I said earlier, we are free. I'd be happy to explain our business model and how we earn our revenue to you, but I can tell you factually that none of our 4,000 clients pay us anything for the things I talk about on my channel. If you got some value out of this video, please hit the like button, the thumbs up icon below. That helps my videos get seen by others. And if you want to find your way back here in the future, the best way to do that is to click on that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.